Hi there, I'm Keith Cauley, and this is Thrive on the Road again from CES 2023. Our Bridgestone Americas podcast is in Las Vegas. We are talking to partners, industry leaders, and some of our teammates about the world of sustainable mobility that we are seeing here at the Consumer Electronics Show in 2023. And I am joined today by two of our Bridgestone teammates who are manning the booth here at CES. Uh, They are talking to all of our visitors coming by uh, around one particular piece of the booth, which is our smart connected corner technology uh, that we really haven't gotten into so far on the podcast before and would love to share. So I'll introduce you, but Kevin and Terrence, thanks so much for taking the time to join us, guys. Sure, yep. thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So want to make sure we get names and titles right. Kevin Shifley, Strategic Innovation Design Lead based out of Akron, correct? That's correct. Excellent. And Terrence Way is the uh, Senior Manager of Advanced Digital Solutions, yep. also based in Akron, yeah? Yep. Awesome. I'm glad we could come to Vegas to get together, everybody, but it's nice. Um, for our listeners at home, we would love to start with just your career backgrounds and journeys so we understand their perspective, what you do in your role, and how you got there. So let's work farther away. Uh, Terrence, start with you. What's your career path been? Great. Um, uh, Thank you for inviting me, by the way. absolutely, man. So I've worked for Bridgestone for 16 years now. I have a PhD in mechanical engineering. I should have introduced you as doctor then. I apologize, doctor. It's fine. (laughs) Um, So when I was hired in 16 years ago, Bridgestone was looking for a specialist in vehicle dynamics and specialized simulation methods. And that's what I did my PhD in. Uh, From there, I've had a variety of roles throughout research and advanced development. Um, I've also worked in tire development and uh, that led me to my current role as the leader of Advanced Digital Solutions. Excellent. Well, it's I will be sure to use the proper title here moving forward. Uh, Kevin, what about you? What's your timeline been like? Well, I've been at Bridgestone for 15 years. Okay. And uh, the most of my time there has been spent uh, in our design studio at the America's Technology Center, where we develop the tread patterns and the sidewalls for all the tires we develop in North America. Um, I'm an industrial designer. I have a Bachelor in Fine Arts in Industrial Design. But over the last couple of years, I've transitioned into a new role as an innovation design lead. Um, Working in the organization, getting a chance to work with a lot of different groups, um, working on new innovations um, as we expand into this sustainable solutions company, getting beyond tires into other technologies, products and services, helping those teams leverage design thinking, come up with new concepts uh, and new storytelling methods to get our technology out there. Yeah, for anybody who's maybe been by the ATC and been up to the design lab, there's a lot of the display concept tires, right, that, that Kevin and his team have put together for maybe shows or customers, OEs over the years, but just bringing that strategic forward thinking future design. And we've got a lot of that in the booth, right? That's what CES is all about. Um, for for those of you who are listening, we've, we've got some information on the bridge. We also put out a, a press release in December trying to talk about what Bridgestone is bringing to CES. And there's multiple you know, portions or setups in this booth around our manufacturing and material circularity and the sustainable aspects there like Waiuli and then into the tire recycling with Lonza Tech. Um, we've also got the mobility solutions aspect on the other side with a, a Zoom and web fleet solutions and how it's all coming together in this concierge service network. But in the middle of that, right, we've got the connected corner. It's the front and center display as people walk by the, the corner intersection there. Um, and this is bringing Firestone Air Ride, plug for new brand, by the way, uh, Air Springs, uh, together with uh, connected Enlighten tire technology. So for our listeners, let's start with, with Kevin. If you could describe the visual of that booth and kind of how it would look, because we're, we're a podcast as an audio medium for many, um, but what does the booth look like when somebody walks up to it and what are all the pieces in there? Yeah, so for this display, we wanted to create something to put it all in context. Uh, so we created kind of a generic electric vehicle chassis uh, in just the front two corners of it uh, on a platform with a 12 foot high illuminated LED wall behind it for storytelling. So we have animations running on that. And we've also um, created an, a platform underneath the vehicle that we can put uh, animations on to bring that road surface to life underneath the tires. Uh, what's interesting, we, we decided to remove the rims from the vehicle mm-hmm. so that we could give people the opportunity to get up close to the tires and look inside the tire where we're featuring um, kind of a glamorized version of a tire mounted <laughs> sensor. It is the larger uh, version of yes. a sensor you could have. Yes. Yes. We've enlarged it, we've, <laughs> we've put you know, lights inside it and it's really been effective for drawing people up to the display and getting them to pay attention to that feature and ask questions. 
Um, also, it allows better visibility of the air spring, which we provide a concept model of the two air springs in the corner system. And we wanted people to really be able to see those, which are often buried up in the vehicle and folks don't know what those look like. So yeah. we put lights in that to also to uh, bring sensing to life and the data sensors that are inside the spring. Yeah, and we should, uh, they've got the nice Firestone logo on the top of those air springs that are visible. And we should make mention, right? I said a plug for the new brand. We just launched here at CES uh, the announcement that Firestone Industrial Products will now know, be known as uh, Firestone Air Ride, its full new brand identity that obviously leans into one of its iconic products and patents that has been leading the industry for a number of years. So we've got enlightened Bridgestone tires. We have Firestone Air Ride air springs. And Terrence, uh, what is the concept of what we're trying to deliver through this booth and what we call the connected corner, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to show the new products and solutions that we're bringing to market specifically specifically for electric and autonomous vehicles. So there's really four main elements there. There's premium tires for electric vehicles. That's number one. Number two is the connected tire. Number three is the connected air spring. And then number four is how all of those components work together as a system and inform predictive analytics. It's been really, really exciting, by the way. The, the display is fantastic with a 12 foot high you know, digital screen and, and the roadway underneath the, the vehicle model. There have been tons of people who have been walking down the aisles and they've just walked over because it looks like an exciting display and they want to hear more, even though they may not be working in the automotive industry. Yeah. It's just something really, really interesting, and they walk over to look at it. Similarly, the the tires themselves are a concept tire, right? It's, it's not a tread pattern that we sell into the market today. It's a concept tread pattern, but tons of people walk over and they say, wow, that's the craziest tread pattern I've ever seen. And the first thing they do is they want to touch the tire, right? I mean, it, like people are really getting excited. And when we start describing the new technology, you, you can really see the light bulb come on for, for many people. You know, you, like people are the message is really resonating uh, with people so that's of course is exciting us and it seems like it's exciting a lot of the people coming by to see our booth yeah and kevin you were here in, in 20 we were both here in, in in 2020 for ces um but have been conceptually designing a lot of the elements of this booth um how has the connected corner taken shape in your mind as it, it's very much something i think we've heard whispers about and there's been projects pursuing it but then you're the one who's kind of brought forward the actual tangible touch and feel display. How has that taken shape over the last couple of years, really? Well, I mean, it's it's organically matured, I think, as an idea inside the company. Um, and really, most recently, that just this past year, with the announcement of Bridgestone Mobility Solutions and how Firestone Air Ride is now part of that group, um, that's really what, what generated the interest in, in putting it all together um, in context. And I think it helps people visualize all these technologies, being able to see them um, it, as they would be in a vehicle, rather than just talking about them as concepts. Um, they can see visually the connection between the spring and the tire and the road surface and, and visualize it better. And, and we really wanted to have something people could engage with. Uh, trying to create something that they understood what's happening under the fender and under the hood where you don't normally see these things. Yeah. And well, when you talk about helping people understand it, you, Terrence said not everybody who walks up here understands automotive, understands the space. We, you know, Kevin mentioned most of these things you're seeing are hidden behind something else in most cases. What is the use case that you're explaining to people? I think we were just talking about it before, but how the tire the sensors, the air spring, and everything works together in an EV world that's really turning a light on for people as they see it. Yeah, um, so first of all, there's the element of the tires themselves for electric vehicles, right? And there's a couple of main elements there. One is that they're optimized for low noise because you no longer have the noise of the engine sure. covering up the, the noise of the tires, so they have to be really quiet. Number two is that they have to have better wear performance because EVs typically wear tires faster than ICE vehicles because of the high torque and also because those vehicles are typically heavier than ICE vehicles, right, because of the large battery packs. And the third main element is the high strength materials in those tires, because again, EVs are typically heavier mm -hmm. than an ICE vehicle. So you have to have high strength materials to, to be able to carry that load. So, so the, the tires are optimized for that application. 
And, and you know, we typically describe a lot of the different use cases. Uh, so for instance, uh, with electric vehicles, uh, many electric vehicles have higher inflation pressures in the tire. And you go to a higher inflation pressure to reduce the rolling resistance and therefore get better EV battery range. Mm -hmm. But the higher inflation pressure makes the tire stiffer, which can negatively impact ride comfort. So what we've been describing to people is how the tire can be engineered together with the air spring, right? So that the, the air spring can compensate for the stiffer tire, right? So you can get the advantages of the higher inflation pressure in the tire without the negative impact of ride comfort. Yeah. And I guess in my head, I have that curiosity of we have what has been Firestone Industrial Products, now Firestone Air Ride. We have the tires that are made on the Bridgestone and Firestone side. There, wouldn't we be naturally combining these two things together as an element of connectivity in the past and engineering together? But it's f far more complex than that, right? I mean, you're dealing with original equipment manufacturers. You're dealing with the different, they are different business units, different engineers and focuses. Uh, it's not as simple as, hey, shouldn't we have always been connected these things together? But it's an interesting, nice development to see it come together. Is it not, Kevin? No, absolutely. I mean, it's... It, the idea has been around a while because it's a good idea <laughs> right. and it doesn't go away because it's a good idea. Just finding the right opportunities and the right timing, um, you know, to find its way out into the market the way it should. Yeah. And I think the electric vehicle platforms and all the challenges that, that Terrence has been talking about in those platforms has really elevated the importance of bringing it together now. Yeah. And I, I think it, obviously most of this booth is put together to bring the tangible world of what we've always been talking about the last couple of years, the Bridgestone 3.0 vision to life. Right, It's this move towards sustainable solutions, connectivity that is all feeding data to make these decisions. Um, you said the sensors are a little bit glamorized. I think they're, they're a little bit bigger than your thumb. They've got some blue lights around it. That's not what they would look like in a natural no. concept. But people are now realizing that we talk about data sensor or sensors in tires. Um, what is kind of from the connected corner that we have here, what is kind of the roadmap that we have for this moving forward? And I guess to, to either of you, not to put anybody on a, on a spot, but in terms of how we think about it, we display it here. What does this journey look like to keep advancing it forward? So the use case that we've really been describing is that most individual consumers are fleet managers. They don't understand when tires are gonna be worn out or which tires are already worn out, yeah. when tires need to be maintained, rotated, replaced, et cetera, right? They have no idea. You know, if you're, if you're talking about a fleet manager that has 500 vehicles, they don't have the time to go around and, and you know use a manual tread depth gauge on every single tire to figure out which ones are worn out or which ones are getting close to worn out. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to generate predictions, right, using predictive analytics to help either individual consumers or fleet managers know that your tires are gonna be worn out in two weeks or two months, giving them a window of time to have those tires maintained or replaced, right? So, and what that allows them to do is, is uh, replace those tires before they're worn out, right? So to maximize safety, but at the same time, allowing them to do it when it's convenient for them, right? Or in the case of a fleet manager, when that truck would already be, you know, not used right when it's when it's already going to be down um so uh, that reduces things like on-road breakdowns right which are very very expensive it reduces unplanned maintenance and unplanned downtime right so obviously fleet managers want to avoid a situation where they have a surprise maintenance situation and that causes them to miss deliveries right so we want to help them understand when those things are going to come up ahead of time so they can plan for them proactively yeah, it's uptime, efficiency, safety. There's a lot of ease that we could go with in the Bridgestone EA commitment that are connected into this. Um, so it is just an exciting thing to see come to tangible life as we get to see it here. Um, we mentioned again that you both were at CES in 2020. Since then, we have an entire hall here in this West Hall of the Convention Center that is all just vehicle tech and mobility solutions, basically. I have to imagine it was not to this scale two years ago. And like how different already in just your experience is CES in embracing basically becoming like a digital auto show of sorts, right? Yeah, it's absolutely an auto show now. <laughs> and it's been fun to see the maturity of that. You know, originally it was a lot of conceptual vehicles, uh, very future forward thinking things. Uh, but now we're looking at real automobiles sitting out here on the floor and we're seeing brand new OEs showing up, you know, making a presence and, and everything looks very real now. 
So it, it's fun to see that happen. Those things aren't going away. They're only getting more and more real. Yeah, and it's different industries too. We've got our partners from Caterpillar here with a giant mining, you know, dump truck, giant mining truck. John Deere has one of their giant wide-armed, you know, watering uh, machines that go through all the fields that you can see while driving through, you know, off the interstate. Um, and then you've uh, got OEs and emerging OEs everywhere as well as the software companies behind it. So it is super complex. You had a chance to walk around, Terrence, I mean, what is stood out to you? What it, what caught your eye at CES 23? Yeah, there's so much interesting stuff at the show these days, right? This The scale of the show is unbelievable, right? Because there's, you know, three or four main halls at this yeah. location, and then there's, you know, three other locations to go and look at. So, I mean, there's, there's fantastic stuff. I mean, it, you know, in mobility, you see all kinds of crazy uh, concept vehicles, right? Stuff that's that's future looking. You have the, the Sony and Honda joint venture where they have screens on the outside of the vehicle <laughs> displaying certain things. You have, you know, autonomous boat, uh, boats, you have uh, robo taxis, you have flying vehicles, you, you know, all kinds of different stuff to look at. And then outside of the transportation industry, you see all kinds of other stuff, right? Yeah. New laptops coming to market, <laughs> new smartphones, new, you know, connected devices. You Any know. touch and feel for every corner of your home is represented here, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, I mean, th this is really fantastic to see where technology is going. And of course, you know, a lot of these technologies start out in other industries and then end up coming coming to automotive, right? So so a lot of vehicles today are like smartphones on wheels, right? Yeah. So what we're starting to see in other industries with new features and new connectivity, you know, that's gonna come to automotive, right? So it's really exciting to see where the industry is going, you know, for, for consumer electronics, for home electronics, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that helps us come up with new ideas about, you know, what people are gonna be expecting from their cars in the future. Yeah. Anything stood out to you, Kevin, that caught your eye or was just kind of weird and wild as you walked around? Well, what I'm always paying, trying to pay attention to is how companies like us are telling their stories, you know, how they're really engaging the audience here at CES. And, you know, a couple of them have been great. Our, our partner at John Deere, our neighbor here at the on the show floor, they've just done an incredible job of engaging people in the technologies that are real today and coming up with some creative ways for, for us to, to see how technology is used in agriculture. So I'd, I'd like to, you know, consider those ideas as we think about new ways to engage people with our technology. Yeah. Well, it's been great to experience the week here together and uh, to kind of really talk to people coming by about the Bridgestone story as we've put it all together in the booth. Um, for those who can't see us, we're in our matching uniforms. We've got our black slacks, polo those invests on uh, bringing the Bridgestone uh, vision to life in multiple kinds of ways together. Um, but Kevin and Terrence, thank you guys so much uh, for taking the time to join us, for being out here at CES representing Bridgestone and really bringing that story forward to the external uh, consumers and, and world here. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. you. Got it. Yeah. And of course, thank you for listening at home. Reminder that you can follow uh, us along on YouTube, watch videos of any of our podcast conversations on the Bridgestone America's YouTube page. And of course, if you want to listen to podcasts from Thrive, you can find us on any of your podcast platforms, whichever one of your choice, just search for Thrive Bridgestone and take a listen. Uh, we, of course, will also take your thoughts, comments, questions, topic ideas via email. You can drop us a note at thrivepodcast at bfusa.com. We're in Las Vegas at CES 2023, but we still remind you to keep on keeping on and remember that at Bridgestone, today, tomorrow, together, we thrive. Thanks for listening and be good, everybody.